Stay free with me, Russell Brand. Hello, Vandana Shiva. Hello, Russell. At this time where the world is consumed by a cost of living crisis, what role does the control of agriculture and big food play? Do you feel that there is a concerted effort to exert control over the basic components of human life? Well, you know, trained as a physicist, I wouldn't have dedicated the last four decades of my life trying to figure out the food and agriculture system that first is very violent. It is based on instruments of war. Otherwise, far farmers of Punjab wouldn't have been dispossessed and got into debt. Innocent women, children, men wouldn't have died in the city of Bhopal in 1984. That's the year I started to study the agriculture system. And I have now not stopped since that time. Big corporations had no role in growing food. Growing food was an act of care, an act of love. The corporations got into agriculture first after the wars, same corporations that made chemicals for Hitler's concentration camps, poison gases for the war, corporations that started to trade in food as a commodity rather than food as nourishment and food as life. And then, of course, a bunch of them <laughs> created junk food and ultra-processed food that's responsible for 75% of the chronic diseases in our times. Globalization, you know, the rules of WTO literally were rules of handing control over agriculture to them. This has brought us the multiple crisis, including the fact that after the financial crisis, the Wall Street collapse of 2008, the financial system has got into food. And if you look at the current cost of living crisis, whether it's energy, or its food, both basic needs, should be public goods, should be regulated as public goods. Most of the hike in the prices is related to speculation and financialization. So food and agriculture have become another commodity, an outward node of the financial system as understood through trading, city trading. I suppose it's a, another abstraction of life and another opportunity for control. What is the role of Bill Gates and other uh, big tech moguls and titans in this increasing uh, technologization, if that is indeed the correct phrase, of, of food and agriculture? So, you know, years ago, Gates visited India and visited our president. And, you know, the Indian presidential palace is a leftover of the British rule. And really brilliant banquets are put out for international guests. And here was all this wonderful Indian food. And Bill Gates ordered a hamburger. Now, you know, that's the level of his food literacy. Uh, how is he getting into the food system? You know, two years ago, actually you know, a few years ago, he started to A, try and control the seed. And I know in England, there is huge uproar around deregulation de of GMOs, particularly the new GMOs, which are called gene edited. But life is complex, self-organized. It's not a word program which you can cut and paste with no consequence. Every change in the editing, one gene editing, 1,500 other genes get destabilized. So, and now the results are there because there's enough experimentation. And the first company that brought a gene-edited food, Calix, uh, was going to be an absolute big return on investment. Well, it just collapsed about three days ago because you can't fake growing food. You can't fake self-organization of the seed. So Gates started to try and control the seed through gene editing. Monsanto had tried to control it through genetic engineering, you know, putting toxic genes into the plants and then taking a patent. Gates is taking patents through e editing. And you can't edit. You know, it's a wrong term. It's just the wrong term. Um, he actually has a company called Editas, which rakes in all the patents. I mean, we know what happened with the vaccines. The very people who were supposed to be regulating were taking the patents for 
uh, for the vaccines, rather than be detached, work in the public interest, work as independent regulators. The second way in which Bill Gates is getting into agriculture is by what he calls digital agriculture. You, know, you can't do digital agriculture. Agriculture is about living seed. It's about living soil. It's about trillions of organisms, trillions of organisms outside and trillions in our gut. What is he meaning by digital agriculture? Basically a surveillance agriculture. If the farmers first were forced to get addicted to chemicals and chemical fertilizers are one, some of the most destructive uh, elements in the world, they're killing the oceans with dead zones. They're leading to emissions of nitrous oxide, which is 300 times more damaging to the climate. And the soils are being killed because soil organisms need organic matter. They don't want a chemical that was made first for explosives and ammunition and is now being used for the soil. Um, Gates is taking the next step after the Monsanto control. The Monsanto control was adapt, uh, engineer seeds to take more chemicals. So the explosion of glyphosate and use of Roundup is because of the Roundup Ready crops. Gates is now wanting a new dependence. The farmers have to have their minds. Farmers have knowledge. He is trying to treat them as empty heads, just like they define the soil as an empty container. And he has signed agreements all over with the Mexican um, IT, uh, you know, the person who controls the, the smartphones of Mexico, that farmers will have to take instructions from the billionaires and the, man of, and the poison cartel of the world. So they depend on chemicals, they depend on seeds, now they're to depend on them, on their knowledge. And this total control can only happen. It can't happen on a farm like Navdanya's where we are just co concluding a beautiful course with people from around the world um, called Return to Earth. For us, doing good farming is returning to the earth as earth beings, taking care of the earth, growing diversity. Our farm is so diverse, there is no way a drone could monitor it, it would get thoroughly confused. But to do the kind of agriculture Gates wants, he wants an agriculture that will have very large scale monocultures, will be chemical, except that you will now, you know, have precision agriculture to tell the farmer, you know, put five kilograms of nitrogen here and put 5.2 kilograms of nitrogen here and would try and engineer the entire industrial agriculture operation. But even more seriously, Gates wants to control our food. You know, he is to, he's the biggest financier of fake food, lab food. So Bayer and Monsanto are already planning a large scale agriculture where agriculture doesn't produce food that we eat, but raw materials of carbohydrates and proteins for fake food to be manufactured in the lab. So it's the ultimate fake. It's fake science, it's fake food, it's fake knowledge. And I, you know, stay free, your program, uh, Russell. You know, staying free today is about seed freedom and food freedom. This is the movement I've been building for 40 years. Each of us, each of us has a right to food freedom. And food freedom means to know what you're eating, how it was grown, and to eat what's healthy for you, rather than eat what will kill you with disease and will kill the planet with chemicals, fossil fuels, because industrial agriculture is a fossil fuel agriculture. It feels like extremist materialism to the point of ecocide where the idea of spirit or mystery or symbiosis or Gaia has been extracted by this advanced rationalism this obsession and fetishization of measurement and control to the point where our planet becomes unviable. It's almost a trope, Vandana, in the sci-fi world, that the mechanical mind of an AI entity will one day, in a dystopian twist, decide that there's no point in humanity, that life itself is unviable. But it appears that we're doing this already by adopting a kind of AI rationalist mentality that excludes the immeasurable value of that which is difficult to know. Other than what you've just said, and I, and I reckon it is contained in what you said, other than returning to practices of agriculture and indeed life that are 
at odds with and oppose this advancing ideology how do we how do we re-engage how do we re-engage with nature in a way that can oppose something that's so vast so powerful and hegemonic something as potent as Bill Gates and all of his wealth and power and infrastructure all veiled under philanthropy. What kind of movements uh, can we practice and support? Well, you know, what I have always done is first understand what are the instruments of control. When I understood the instruments of control were the chemicals and poisons in agriculture, I said, let's grow food without chemicals. And that's totally possible in ecological agriculture, agroecology, organic farming, biodynamics. Give it whatever name you want to. Watch entire episodes on demand for free at rumble forward slash Russell Brand.